Hello everyone, it's Kathy with Kathy's Candle Creations again. Um, today I'm going to do a quick video on how to make soy candles. I um, have covered a little bit in, in a, another video how I do it, but today I'm going to show you and I'll give you my reasoning behind it because I literally do make candles, uh, my soy candles, a little different from anything I've seen anybody else do. Uh, but my, um, I stand behind it and my customers stand behind it especially my repeat customers. Um, so before we get started making candles, what you'll notice is this will go up. You do not want your hair, ladies, hanging all down around while you're, you're making candles. Um, last thing you want to do is make a candle and you have one of your hairs in it. That would be, to me, it would be mortifying. So make sure you put your hair up and you'll put your gloves on, okay? So let's get started. Okay, first thing you'll need is a scale. Um, my scale is well used. It is clean, actually, but, um, it, if you get fragrance oils on your scale or dye, some of the dyes, it will mess your scales up. So, um, first thing, I measure everything in grams. So, right now, you can see it's not in grams. So, I'm going to switch it over to grams. So, I do have a brand new scale, and this is what I recommend if you want to get a scale um, the one with the um, the top that's not going to ruin on you, okay? So the first thing you're going to want to do is put your pour pot on the, the scale and then you want to tear it out. So you want to zero it. So when you're weighing your mac wax, you're not actually weighing the pot as well. You're just going to the weigh, weigh the wax. And then next, what you'll want to do is add the wax to it. But I'm gonna pause for a minute. So as you can see, I have 1,300 grams of wax in my pot. So now I'm going to put it on a double boiler. Got about an inch or two, maybe an inch and a half of water in here, and I'm going to sit my pot down in here. Now, one thing I will tell you to do is keep a check on your water because. If it boils out, you're going to burn your wax up. So keep a check on your water. I've got it on a medium heat because I don't want it to, to melt too fast. This does take time. So um, at this point, I add um, a, 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 a tablespoon worth of uh, organic coconut oil. A tablespoon per pound. So not sure if you can see, but I have now added my coconut oil on top. So my coconut oil, oil is on top, and at this point, this is when I add my dye as well. Um, that way I don't have to worry about at the end stirring and, and seeing if, make sure it's melted all the way. Um, I do use dye flakes. I prefer dye flakes um, to uh, the liquids. I have more control with the dye flakes than the liquids, but, but you do get good color out of liquids. Uh, I mix all my colors, so I need to um, be able to add less than a tiny drop if I want to, or a lot more. So I use the dye flakes. There are also dye blocks. You'll have to find what works best for you, but this is the point where I add my dye flakes. So now you can see I've added my dye flakes to the top. And this will all melt down the coconut oil, the dye flakes, and the wax. But it's going to take some time. So while my wax is melting, um, one of the, there are two things that I do. Um, besides, I do keep a good check on it, and I, after it's melted down from the flakes, I stir it often until it reaches temperature. But while I'm waiting for it to melt, I do the math because I want to know how much fragrance oil I have to put in it. I use uh, around 10%, and so I add 1.5 ounces to one pound and I convert everything over to grams uh, so I can get very um, detailed about it. So let's do the math. Okay, my math. So as I said, I convert everything into grams. So 1,300 grams, but I need to know how many pounds it was. So I put 1,300 in the gram section and it gives me 2.866 pounds. So I take, I need for my fragrance oils um, to know how many pounds, so I take the 2.866, round it up to 2.9 pounds, and 
pounds times 1.5. The top part, I just plug into the Google conversion calculator. The second part, I do on my calculator, 2.9 times 1.5. 1 1.5 is what's giving me about my 10%. So 1.5 times the 2.9 equals 4.35 ounces. Like I said, I change everything to grams. So 4.35, I go back and plug into the um, Google calcula conversion calculator. 4.35 ounces equals 1.232 grams. Okay, so I will use 123 grams of fragrance oil. So that's how I do my math for my, my batch. And I do it for each batch individually. So after the math, I want to come and check my wax and I still feel that see there's still some in the bottom stir it and I'll come back since I still have more time I will now work on wicking my containers so wicking containers um, I'm using the 8 ounce tins today you can use hot glue glue dots or the red RTV um, if you can see that well on there. So I use the gl hot glue. So my hot glue gun is already heated up while I was waiting waiting for my wax to cool. Waiting for my wax to melt, not cool. Um, so my wicks, if you can see, I use CD18s for these. I've tried CD16, I mean Eco 16s work uh, for most fragrance oils and dye loads, but when you get a heavy dye load, uh, so, so for like your dark reds or your dark, your dark rich colors, uh, the, the Eco 16s did not give me the melt that I wanted. So I'm gonna show you a little trick I do here too. So I've got four tins and I've got my four wicks out. Uh-huh, so I couldn't find my scissors. <laughs> so I had to go find my scissors. So I've got my wicks, and I'm going to measure down into the tin. This is just a trick that I, I do. And I'm going to cut a little bit above it. And the reason I do this is because I don't use wick holders. I don't have to. Um, I'll show you in a few. But I use the hot glue... My tins have been cleaned out, so I put a, a little bit of hot glue in there, and I use a um, popsicle stick, and I put it down in the middle. Now, one thing great about these tins is they actually have kind of a guide for you, which I absolutely love, but I've used the silver tins too. Uh, there's no guide in there. You'll want to clean your tins out, wipe them out, before you do make your candle in it. Um, I guess during shipping and stuff, sometimes there's some dust, a little debris in there. And you do not want that to be in your candle once you make it. So make sure you clean your tins out. This is what I do while I'm waiting for the wax to heat up to 185. Actually, and you'll see that I'll actually heat it up to 186. So now we're going to go check and see what the temperature of the wax is while these adhere really well. So I just use, and this is well used too, and it's clean. It's just colored from dyes and things like that. So I use a um, food meat thermometer, and I stick it in to check my temperature. And I can't stir while I'm checking my temperature, so I'm just going to move that around. And we are... 
round. I don't think it's going to go much over 173. Yeah, 173 right now. It's 72. Um, so we'll come back and check that in a couple minutes. One thing I want you to be conscious of is the temperature that you're pouring your candles. The temperature in my house right now is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It does make a difference in the tops in pouring your candles to have uh, your room that you're pouring in over 70 degrees. I'm also going to show you, I want to check, oh, this is getting a little bit too warm. So I want to check what my color is since I've added my blue and my yellow dye flakes. So I'm just going to let this drip a little bit until it's almost drip drip done. And then I'm going to come over here on a plate and I'm going to see what that cools down to. I'll be honest with you and tell you right now, that's not the shade I want. I wanted to show you that it's a little lighter because I'm going to add just a little bit more to it for the color that I'm trying to match. Okay, so I added a little bit, a little bit more blue and a little bit more yellow to it. So I'm going to check and see if it's what I want now. See, and I do this when I'm matching colors of previous batches. See, I know that's going to be a lot closer to what I actually want once it dries. So, so I need to measure out my fragrance oil. Okay, I'll be honest with you and say that I got lucky when I tried using this to pour my fragrance oil in because if you use something like a, a solo cup, it will eat right through it. So, I recommend be careful with what you pour your um, fragrance oil in. Um, use a glass or a sturdy, sturdy plastic that's not going to um, essentially melt or eat away when you add the fragrance oil. So remember, I needed 123 grams of fragrance oil. And my scale is on grams. And I'm going to try to pour this. Wow. I'm running out. But we will add 123 grams of fragrance oil. So as you can see, I have 123 grams of my fragrance oil. So we're going to check the temperature of the wax again. We're at 183 right now, going up. And I want to get to 186. Checking again. Should be there. you always want to heat to 185 you really don't want to heat much more than 185 if you get too high you will literally burn your wax up so as you can see I'm at 186 now so I am going to remove my wax from the heat stir it a little bit now here's the Kathy's the Kathy method okay right now you can see about how much I have in there. I'm going to add three quarters or right around three quarters of it. See, I've got about a quarter of it left. And I'm going to stir for two minutes. Now, why do I do this? Okay, I'm adding the three quarters at the 180, 80, 186 because it's going to cool down as soon as I put the, the fragrance oil in there. So, I'll show you. As soon as I put the fragrance oil in, it changed temperature. It dropped down. So, yes, I stirred it for just a little bit, but now we're at 176, maybe 177 after I've added the fragrance oil and I'm stirring. Okay, between 175 and 185, if you watch the fragrance oil video, is when the molecules of the wax and the fragrance oil it, it that's when they say scientifically the wax molecules are ready to accept the fragrance oil um, molecules so let let me remind you that then the fragrance oil and the wax is going to 
they're, they're going to bond together. And so you're going to have something that's totally different. The wax and the fragrance oil is going to be a heavier molecule than just the wax was or than just the fragrance oil was. So if it's a heavier molecule now, um, it makes it harder to burn off. However, just to appease those that say, oh, no, 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 don't add it so high, it's going to burn off. Well, I'll show you what else I do after I stir for two minutes and let it cool. So I come back and stirred after it's cooled for a little bit. It's at 150. I want it to drop down to about, I want it between one, 135 and 145. Really, I want it between one, 140 and 145. So I have to wait a little bit longer because it's still at 150. Okay, let's see what the temperature is now because I want it between 135 and 145. Actually, I want it between closer to um, 140 and 145. And we're at 143.7 now. So what I'm going to do now, you remember I didn't add but three quarters of the fragrance oil at the one, 185. So now I'm going to add the last quarter of fragrance oil. Guess what this does? This pacifies any of those that think that there's burn off. I really don't think there's burn off. Um, I, I really think that the molecules um, get too heavy to burn off. There's possibly some that don't blend, some fragrance oils that don't blend with the um, wax, and so they, they slip away. So if they do, then I'm covering it with the khaki method by adding my fragrance oil at 185 and about 140, 143, somewhere around there, and then stirring for two more minutes. I want, and y'all, if somebody tells you you don't have to stir for two minutes, I want to tell you what, it makes a difference. If you get little bitty um, bubbles at the end and it's popping up and you have fragrance oil on the end, on the tops of your candle, it's because you did not mix your fragrance oil in your wax for two minutes. It is important, okay? So, I'll see you after a couple minutes. Okay, so I stirred my wax for two minutes, and then I let it sit for a few minutes, and I come back. And check I actually want to pour between 130 and 135 um, we're at 135 now so I'm gonna go ahead and pour I'll show you that okay let's pour you know I already got my tins ready so one thing I love about these tins is there's a little ridge or a line and that's where I always feel to Another thing I wanted you to see is that I pour my wax melts and my tins at the same time out of the same formula. Oops, I went over. I normally use a little syringe to fill these up, but I want to show you something before the end of the video is over as far as Oops, a little more over. Before I walk away from these tins, I come and I straighten my wicks up because as you see, I do not have wick holders on these. So I come and straighten them up and I will come back one more time before they cool cool 
and check and make sure they're still in the right place. And I promise you, me wiggling this all around is not going to change the beautiful smooth tops that I get. So we're going to let these cool and the wax melt the, these cool and I will come back and show you after they cool. So as you can see, they have gotten solid now. You can see my smooth tops. I just wanted to show you this real quick. Um, making wax melts that aren't in a mold. You, I want you to see how well 464 does come out of molds. Yes, this is a, the most simplest mold that you can do, but you can, they are solid, they are hard, they are firm. So <clears throat> I wanted you to see that you can make wax melts, uh, your containers and embeds essentially out of 464 soy wax. So I hope that actually seeing the Kathy method the way I do it has helped. Um, if if it does, please let me know because I love to hear feedback. Um, remember, you heat to 185, 186 is what I do, and then take it off, add three quarters of the fragrance oil, stir for two minutes, let it cool down to about 143, add the last quarter of the fragrance oil, stir for a good two minutes again because you want it all, all mixed up good. Um, and I added my, uh, coconut oil and my dyes at, at the beginning so they could melt down and I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, I showed you how to test on a plate um, the colors to get the to, to get the color that you wanted. Um, I really hope this helps. It's the Kathy method. <laughs> um, love to hear feedback on it uh, because it really works well for me. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, it really works well and for melts, embeds, and for my container candles. So if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Plenty of people do, and I always try to respond. And um, you can find me at Kathy's Candle Creations, the business site, the uh, Soy, Simply Soy is the Facebook group that I, I run. And then I'm at uh, Dessert Candle Makers and the Candle Chef and uh, DIY. You can find me almost anywhere. <laughs> So I'll try to help the best I can. Um, like and subscribe like they all say. And I really hope this helped. Y'all have a wonderful evening.